Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT. Happens to be version 12. We are in my alternate world. That is on my second installation. And this is the one I use for the D&D 4.0 game engine testing. But that's not relevant because we're not looking at that today. What we're actually doing is looking at a add-on module which is Master Crafted, the Crafting Manager. Now, a couple of things. First of all, this is agnostic, meaning it is not specific to D&D. &D. You can use this for any game setting that you have. So that's really important. It's going to work for anything. Which means, because it works for anything, it doesn't matter that we're on the D&D &D 2024 PHB and D&D &D 4.0 game world. I could be using it in my normal game world. I just came over here for something different, because <laughs> just because... So this module is one of Ripper's. Um, we know Ripper's stuff is solid. It's really good. The only question is, is, is it something you want to use? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. Now, it is one of his premium modules. So you can't just grab this one for free. However, if you do join his Patreon, you get access to all of his premium modules. So you're not paying just for one module. You're paying for any of those premium ones you want um, for as long as you want to continue paying. Um, so it's one of those, the more of his modules you end up using, premium modules you end up using, the better value it is. Yeah, um, there's some of his that I use a lot. OmniSearch. I can't live without OmniSearch anymore. <laughs> so that one is always going to stay. Um, so I have no problem of of, um, of paying my Patreon for Ripper every single month. Yeah, happy to support because the work he does is really, really good. Anyway, enough of uh, enough of that. Mastercrafted. Okay, what does it do? Well, it enables us to create recipes. Uh, for our players to be able to craft new and exciting items in game and do it themselves so in you know there's uh, most game systems have some kind of crafting idea now in the 2014 D, &D rules it's very weak very very weak um, around the rules of what you can do but you still get the idea of oh you can write spells and spell books and stuff like that that still all exists very loose rules around making your own armor and, and all those bits you've got all of these tool skills that nobody really uses this might be the answer to that now in the 2024 rules in the dungeon master's guide no it's not out yet um, but that goes into a lot more depth about the idea of bastions so your player characters end up with like a home base whether it's a you know a building a castle a camp and each player has their own thing and the idea is, is that you're probably, there's more to do outside of adventuring. So you're more likely to spend time doing things like crafting. So I'm really looking forward to that coming along and giving us more in-depth of things to do in downtime, more details about training and making items and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So in that vein, we want to be looking at this um, this master crafting stuff. Now I've just chucked in a whole bunch of items here that I've pulled from the SRD, stuck them in my items, and basically it's a bunch of raw materials so that we can use, or rather Sorryman can use, for making stuff. So now because I've got this module installed, at the top of my items I've got a recipe manager. I've also got the hiccups. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> so clicking on my um, recipe manager I'm in as the DM at the moment uh, but it gives me access to my recipe books you start off with none you can import some uh, there are other modules that provide stuff for this I don't like to cover all the integrations with other modules to start off with uh, because it just throws us and we end up by well, hang on a minute what's doing you know which module is doing what uh, but for example there is the um, Potion Crafting and Gathering module by Action J. Um, that is that produces a whole bunch of recipes that can go in here pre-built for you. So that's really nice. You can also export your recipes 
and import them using JSON files. So it's relatively easy to share with other people if you want to. You don't need to build compendiums and stuff. You can just email them the, the JSON file and go, oh, here's my item. But what's the point in talking about that when we haven't shown you what it bloody does? Okay, so I'm gonna add a recipe book here. Now I can call this book anything I want. Um, I'm gonna call it woodwork. I can put a description in there. I can give it an image if I want to. I can't be bothered. Uh, I can give it a sound if I want to. Now this tools box is really interesting um, because you can select the tools that you have to have, so wood carver's tools, if you want to make any recipe in this book. So you can set that tool requirement for the whole book of recipes or for the individual recipes or both. So this one's about woodwork. <clears throat> So any recipe that requires woodwork, I'm gonna say you're gonna need wood carver's tools, okay? And there's a couple of options here to whether you allow your players to kind of hover over and see information about the required ingredients or the end product. And player permissions for your players, whether they can use or not use this recipe. So you can create a whole bunch of recipes and only reveal them at a time that you want to. So maybe you create them all and as they go through the dungeon, they find a book that's got some recipes in and then you allow them to access it, however you want to do. I'm gonna allow mine right now because old Sorryman here is gonna do some crafting for us. So let's do confirm. We now have a recipe book called Woodwork. It's got no recipes in it, it's just a book. We can right click and we can say add a recipe. Now, this is slightly misleading because it says name new book. This is not. That should say new recipe. We're going to make some fire arrows. I can put a description in if I want to. I, I can select an image. I don't want a club. Um, ammunition. Uh, let's just let's pick that one. Doesn't matter for this purpose, but you can pick any image you want. Uh, do we allow them to inspect ingredients and inspect, inspect the finished product? It will default to whatever the recipe book is, but we can override that and say, actually, no, for this recipe, all the things in the book, yes, but for this recipe, no, or we can leave it as default. So you can set those permissions at different levels. And the same with, can Sorryman access this? So you might say some of these recipes are deny. He can't use them even though he can see the book. He can't use them, or we can leave that in this case as default. Now notice for this particular recipe, we also have this tools section here. Now we've already said for the recipe book, you need wood carver's tools. So we don't need to state that here, but you might want to say, oh, actually for this recipe, not only do you need wood carver's tools, you also need the poisoner's kit or the brewer's supplies or alchemist's uh, kit, whatever it might be. So you can add more tools in if you want to, we're not going to. Our workbook now says that we've our wood work book now says that we've got one. If I left click on it, it will show that we've got fire arrows recipe in this book. And if I left click on this, we can build that recipe. So we've got our picture that we chose, the name of it. In small writing just under here, it says required tools, wood carver's tools, because we said that everything in this book needs it. And now we've got our ingredients and our results. So what is it I want to make? I'm saying we're gonna make fire arrows. That's going to be our result. We can have multiple things that come out of this if we want to. For this purpose, we're just gonna say fire arrows. So what are our ingredients? And you can make this up however the heck you like. Well, we need normal arrows in there. So a normal arrow at the moment is gonna create a fire arrow. Now note in the top right hand corner, it's quite small, there's a little orange circle with a number in it. So at the moment this says one arrow, and if I hover over the tooltip says one, we'll create one fire arrow, okay? Because I've got that there, all right? So you can change the numbers if you want to, and we're gonna do that in a moment. So what else do we think we want for fire arrows? Well, I'm gonna say we need some canvas, so something to burn. Oh, hang on a minute. What if they want to use linen instead of canvas? Well, if I drag that and drop that in the same box, so you can see here, this is now an either or situation. 
you need one arrow and you need either one canvas or one linen so you can put a number of different things in there and that is either of those will work what else do we need i need oil you've got to have some oil something to actually burn properly um, and let's be mean and say right we need a way to make sure the uh, the cloth doesn't fly off the arrows when it's soaked in oil we're going to say you also need some string so at the moment we're going to use a lot of cloth a whole vial of oil and one arrow to create one fire arrow now that seems a bit ridiculous it seems very very expensive on oil let's say we can make up our mind we can do what we want one flask of oil is actually enough to make 12 fire arrows so if we change that number in the corner we're now saying we need 12 arrows plus one canvas or linen plus one lot of string and one oil will now make us 12 fire arrows as long as we've got the woodcarver's tools job done that's it we've made that recipe should we see how that actually works though so first of all before i before i do that let's open soryman's inventory and let's make sure he has the requirement so we're going to give him some arrows he's already got some arrows that's great he's got a bunch of them uh, we need to make sure he's got some canvas oh yeah he's got two lots now that's fine we need to make sure he's got some oil yes he already did that's fine um make sure he's got some string etc in fact actually let's get rid of the string and pretend he hasn't got that and i'll show you what happens all right so that's all good now let's whiz over to our other screen and have a look at uh, a sorryman logged in okay so this is sorryman in game here uh, and if he looks at his items he hasn't got any of those items because they're not shared with him as a compendium or anything but he does have the recipe manager now if he clicks on this he can see he can't create recipe books himself but he's got access to this woodwork book remember we left that as he can view it and in that book he can see fire arrows if he clicks on this this is going to tell him what that recipe is he needs 12 arrows he needs linen or canvas he needs one oil and he needs string now these blue ones you can see this is showing that he already has this this is showing he does not have string he can need do it so he can't get this result now if i hover over it it tells me it's going to be fire arrows um, because we said that he can see what that is so we need to make sure we give him some string so let's open Soryman's character sheet again and give him some string let's give him a a small bunch of string there he's now got 10 string lovely and we can go back over to Soryman now it hasn't automatically straight away updated to say he's got string even though we've just added it okay because it's it hasn't checked again to see if he's got it if we close that open it again uh, and we go back to our fire arrows now it's saying we've got it yay brilliant so let's open his character sheet over here uh, just checking he hasn't got anything silly like fire arrows in there no brilliant so he can click on this it says don't have permission oh okay do i need to drag these items over um oh he should be able to oh stupid boy <laughs> okay that's telling me what it is it's the hammer to actually craft it that's right you don't drag it out gosh you know just brain just goes to pieces as soon as I start talking so hold control for quick craft but if i just click once on here you can see if i get the tool tips out of the way it's going to consume 12 arrows one canvas one oil and one string so it's not allowing me to choose between canvas and linen here because well actually it is but i've already got canvas selected if you can just about see there's an orange border around that one okay and it's going to give me fire arrows let's close that and if i click on the blue one now it's yep it's not going to do that yep it's not going to switch it for me that's fine let's craft those bosh we now just got fire arrows in here so whatever that item does we now have those fire arrows and we should see that our other items reduce in the number that we have canvas has gone down to 49 uh, etc so let's see if we can do that again 
um, you switch these items by right click, not left click. So we made it using Canvas. If I right click on this one, it's now highlighted linen. So if we left click once more, it's now going to use 12 arrows, one linen, one oil, and one string. So if we look linen here, we only have one linen. So when we craft, crafting successful, oh, perhaps we did have more linen, did it? It didn't take linen. That's interesting. It's not taking my linen. But it is producing my fire arrows, 36. I think it's, it's still it's taking from the canvas. Even though I did say, oh, actually, I wanted to take from linen, um, and it was suggesting that it was going to take linen, it actually still took the canvas. How bizarre. Wasn't expecting it to do that. Um, I might have to uh, report that to Ripper and just say, hang on a minute, why is it doing that and find out. But you can see the point and how this works and it's just beautiful. And you can do so many things with it. Let's go back to over here and open our recipe book. So we've got things like acid vials and things like that, alchemist's fire, so many things that we could choose to do um, and add recipe wise. We can add a recipe Let's just call it guff okay it doesn't matter what we call it for this purposes but we could say you know um, we need to if you have a one pole um, that um, we're going to make a torch right and we're going to want we're going to want a pole we know we need to use wood carvers tools um, we can say oh actually yeah we're going to need canvas for that um, we're going to want um, we're going to want oil for that and we can just throw things. It might be very, very similar, but you can use very similar items to create a different thing. Maybe linen's no good for this and it has to be canvas. There we go. And actually this is going to make 10 torches from one log and one oil um, and one lot of string. There we go. We now got a torch. So we could make a... We can make a tasty meal if we wanted to do that. Uh, so our tasty meal recipe, we could say, oh, right, what do we want now? I haven't got much in the way of food on here. But we could say, for example, oh, you've, it's got to include ginger. It's got to include pepper. Um, it's got to include, who knows, whatever you, whatever you want it to be. Um, probably not oil. Pepper or oil, that will do. Uh, <laughs> you can add in anything you like. Um, to create your final product. There we go, make sealing wax out of that. It doesn't care how stupid your recipe is. So you can just gumph anything together that you want to do that is going to be useful. Now, obviously, you want to make stuff that is actually going to provide a benefit to your party that they are likely to craft, or otherwise you're going to make millions of recipes and, and they're never going to use them. But you could use it for creation of magic items, for um, <clears throat> if they want to make a spell scroll, you could say, well, actually, yeah, they need a copy of this. They need these magical ingredients and this special ink. You can do that if you want to. Absolutely. You can go as deep as you want to, um, as much as you want to. Um, so these recipes, if I, uh, if I right click on my fire arrows, you can see where we've got this export. If you click on that, that is going to create a mastercrafted recipe fire arrows JSON file. And that is where you can then import and select any JSON file you've got and bring in from other people. So that's really nice. You can carry on doing that if you want to, which is, yeah, it's just really, really nice the fact you can share those JSON items with your other your other game worlds, other players, whatever you want to do. Now there is one last thing I <clears throat> excuse me, I want to touch on is in the settings, because there's very few settings, there is this thing called enable cauldron. And the idea of the cauldron, in fact I'll read it to you, it says enable the cauldron interface. This will allow players to mix any ingredients together to discover recipes. So if you've got lots of herbs and spices and things like that, 
and again you're probably familiar with some computer games where you throw different stuff together and it may or may not succeed in creating a potion so you can do that and allow them to experiment what happens if i add this and this and some ginger oh it's a potion of healing oh brilliant we now know how to make that so you can allow that option for them to experiment with so again check Ripper's wiki on this one because there is loads of things that you can do aside from the relatively um, base stuff that I've showed you. I did talk about the fact that it will um, you can use the potion crafting and gathering module by Action J that will bring in a bunch of recipes for you. This also works with Ripper's other module called Gatherer that we've not looked at which is about collecting stuff. So you can collect all the stuff and then you can use this to make it into things. Um, you can also use like Simple Calendar. We've looked at that, which controls time in the game. And you can actually set, if you've got that on, you can set how long it takes to make stuff. Yeah, that's a bit cool, isn't it? So if you said actually it's going to take three hours to do that, it won't make that item until three hours have passed according to simple calendar which is really really cool again all of that is in the wiki for you you can go and look that up um, if that is um, you know of of interest but i just wanted to introduce you to the idea of this module if you're into crafting if your players are into crafting and you want to use this it's really really neat um, the only challenge i would say is if you're starting with a blank um a blank recipe um, bookshelf that's the word isn't it um, it might take you a while to work out what your recipes are um, and put them all in and to create that and bearing in mind that you may not have your product or your ingredient items already in your SRD so you may need to be creating new items you know, with our fire arrows I, I just they're normal arrows that I called fire arrows they don't do anything. <laughs> I cheated just for the sake of the video. But I would need to make sure I've actually got arrows that do fire damage and are actually fire arrows if I wanted to do that. Um, let's ignore the fact that fire arrows historically are not really a thing. <laughs> they're not really a thing. Hollywood love them. <laughs> but they're not really a thing. Um, but yeah, I would need to make sure I've got that actual item. And if I wanted to go, oh, if I put a pole together with a poisoner's kit and I put together this and that and, you know, I could make a, a staff of poisoning or something like that. Yeah, it could do it. But I need to go and create a staff of poisoning as my end result so that that's actually going to work. So that might take a fair bit of time if you don't already have those items prepped. Um, so, yeah, be prepared for a long time crafting of putting together recipes if you decide to go down this route i think it's absolutely brilliant i think it's such a beautiful little mod that allows you to do this it for me it doesn't really have a place in my games um because if you're going to craft something it tends to be done in downtime um rather than on the fly this is one of those ones that very much appeals to that you know computer game you know the video game type of setup Baldur's Gate and things like that there will be players that really enjoy it but I'm old school I'm paper and pen um, so that kind of doesn't really quite sync with me my, my my PC games are for you know for me to play d and is for us to play and they're quite different even if thematically they're very can be very similar and anyway enough waffle I hope you like this one. Leave a comment, leave a like. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Tick the little bell icon to be notified of new videos as they come out. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care.